two-time Super Bowl champ, our buddy Brandon Jacob. BJ, what's going on, dude? Welcome back to the fan. BT, man, you know, it's great, man. Things are great. Love being here. Always love being here. There's always some nice energy around here, There's man. always energy. Do you yeah, hear me absolutely. and him yelling a little bit? He, yeah. he doesn't like what the Giants did. He thinks the Giants messed up last night, this Does guy. He really? Why is that? Well, I'll be curious to get your take on it, Brandon. I watched you, obviously, throughout mm-hmm. your career win, running the football, defense, smash mouth football, obviously, Eli being clutch. You didn't need a top wide receiver with the Giants. We saw Odell Beckham Jr., top wide receiver. They didn't win squat after your, you know, your guys, uh, you know, model left and moved on. Right? Do you? I know the the sport has evolved and changed. Do you believe in building a team by getting a top receiver? Me, I would have traded down if you didn't like the quarterback. I just don't believe in needing a, a star receiver. How do you view building a football team? How do I be? How, how do, as a running back, right? So I want I want to take you back. Yeah. You know, you don't need a top wide receiver to be able to make a team. Do you remember in 2008, we dominated everybody? Right. And a mistake happened with Plexico. Yeah. Once that happened with Plexico, our team did what? Right. I know you went and south. We, I know. We, we, we went down Change, there. Everything changed. It changed everything. four ended up losing to the Eagles that year. It in the changed everything. You know why? Because we had our way of playing. We we had our identity. Right? You got a 6'5 wide receiver on our side that can outrun just about any mm-hmm. DB out there. So he's going to take a little bit to handle. Right. Yep. So while you're taking a little, I think Plexico had that season. I think he had like 400, 500 yards. Receiving. Really good blocker too. Really right. good so, blocker. So he 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 mattered to our offense a lot. You're gonna sit there in double coverage and put him in double coverage. Right. So me and the mod just gonna run down. Your right. Throat. But but as far as level of importance, interior line play, quarterback, edge rusher corners like to me i just don't you could you could find wide receivers and the fact that giants don't have a lot to begin with they don't i don't think they have a quarterback now maybe your opinion is different you like daniel jones i i just feel like it's building outside in building backwards where they needed so many other things as opposed to a wide it's not about neighbors himself he could be a stud for all i care i mean it's not about that it's just about taking a wide receiver that early i me myself honestly i'm gonna go and tell you this because you said about interior alignment as far as you know, I, I think that's a, a need almost for every team. But you just seen we just took two ta- two tackles in the last five years, mm-hmm. top five. Top right. Too bad only one of them could play. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Right. So you see where we at with that, right? And yeah, not yeah. saying that 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 was a need for us at the time, but I think you could also find that later on in the draft. I think this whole draft thing, man, just like the draft and in, 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 in free agency, I think it's kind of pissing in the wind a little bit. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and, 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 and listen, that's not I, fun for anybody. Well, you, you 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 were overlooked. Teak yeah, was overlooked. Yeah. Second round pick. You, I, you I get you on some. Like, yeah, I, I, I think these guys go with 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 team need so much. I, like like obviously somebody has to be taken early, but it's a lot of talent all throughout the draft. You know, and sometimes some guys are hyped up. And, and some of the guys that are not, you know, I came in in the fourth round and, and they didn't expect anything out of me. Right. Nope, no, nope. I broke the rushing record. You bounced around with good touchdowns. You know? you, a couple colleges, right. you bounced around. Back when everybody wasn't bouncing around, right. everybody's bouncing around now. It's a different thing with the portal. With Toto, our buddy Brandon Jacobs in studio, BT and South. All right, so it wouldn't have made any sense to cut Jones or move on from Jones now based on what they owe him, almost $70 million. It's just, it's reckless. You can't do that. But what, what, we, what I don't want to say, I'll speak for myself, like, I don't want to see, like, a slightly above average season from Jones. And you might get that because neighbors are going to be a beast and you got some other pieces online getting a little bit better. And then the Giants themselves say to themselves, oh, man, maybe, maybe we can push this thing long-term forward with Jones. I don't think he's that guy. Do you? I think he has – I still think Daniel Jones has everything to be that guy. Really? I do You think he's got that. a lead arm talent, man? I do. I do. Okay, I think good. he's got a lead arm. I, I do because – if you if you give Daniel Jones you know some guys around him you know he hasn't really had you know who was going to be our leading receiver last year coming into the season we was all looking at Darren Waller like he was going to yeah. be the guy right yeah he was going to be the guy he ended up suffering a bunch of injuries you know uh, we had Saquon you know he missed a couple of games and Daniel Jones is on and off the field from injuries you know you got Evan Neal that was hurt. For the majority of the season, Andrew Thomas got, got hurt. And the first Thomas game, I think, with the it was just so game much one. going on. It was just so it was that that dark cloud that was around our team that we don't really know how good we really could have been because we had so many guys down, you know. And I, and I think you know, given this year we got, we just drafted Malik Neighbors mm-hmm. in the top ten. Obviously, I think he's. Top ten talent. I, love him. I think he's nope. the best. Water. I think he's better than Harrison. I agree a hundred percent. And 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 you know, not to take anything from Harrison, I think he's great as well. But I think Malik Neighbors brings more as a complete wide receiver than any other wide receiver in the draft. Why? Because he can catch the ball. 
you know, he can run a hitch and take it 80 yards, break tackles. Yep. You know, he runs every route in the route tree. You know, he has down the field uh, uh, speed to you know, threaten your defense to get behind him. The guy can do everything, and I'm uh, and I'm glad Malik Neighbors is with the Giants because I, I'm I'm probably one of the biggest Malik Neighbors fans there is. You know, so I, behind me, brother, I'm number one. I'm, I'm, the I'm fan. born and raised in Louisiana, yeah. watching play, man. So yeah, he's from you've Louisiana. Seen him. So you've seen uh, him. I don't know, BT. Uh, I, I don't maybe, know. maybe you are number one. I got you. <laughs> Friendly reminder: Odell Beckham Jr. was also oh, on there, and uh. the Giants won squat with him. So. And, he was, and he was a great receiver. Like he's a great take, receiver, right? He was a great receiver, but the Giants made the playoffs and went eleven to five with Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, they, yeah, but they, they were, did yeah. it with their defense. And then when it came time for the Giants to show up in the playoff game, Odell was partying on the boats. And remember, they had Odell, Victor Cruz. They still couldn't move the football. Odell was a game changer as far as you get the ball in his hands, you could flip the field one play. That offense was not good with Ben McAdoofus. You know Ben McAdoo. I call him Ben McAdoo. Uh, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to clarify <laughs> for those who didn't get it. Jacob, you see what I got to deal with this guy yeah, every day? And, He's and nuts. They just, they? I just feel now if you believe in Daniel Jones, totally different story and totally understand this pick. If you're the belief, and, I, and it sounds like you are, Brandon, and it's and other Giant fans, we've heard from them. If you are the belief of Daniel Jones just having a fluke bad year last year because of injury, and injury not only to him, but Barkley, Thomas, all the stuff that we mentioned before, then I understand this pick. Then this pick does make sense. I do not believe in Daniel Jones. Therefore, the pick, to me, does not make sense. I think they need a new quarterback. So you think the Giants should have took a quarterback? Or, with, with or if you didn't like one, like I, I would trade up for May, take McCarthy at six or Penix at six. No, don't take McCarthy. Well, yeah, I'm McCarthy's just saying, not it. Yeah, no. I, I, well, me personally, I would have probably taken Penix at six or trade down. If you don't love one of those guys, that's fine too. But then trade down and get more picks to where you could build your team better. I just would not have taken the stud receiver. I just feel like it's building the team backwards. So we're talking to Brandon Jacobs, uh, of course, two-time Super Bowl champions in studio. Uh, let's give this a pop here. We'll get some stuff on social media for you as well before we get back. Maybe to the coach. I want to address some things in the building. So the celebrity softball game with, with uh, your buddy Dexter Lawrence, Team Lawrence versus Team Jacobs. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's coming up Saturday, May 18th. It's uh, over in Pomona, beautiful minor league stadium. So, first of all, who's on your roster? Who, who's on Team Jacobs so Man, far? I got, I got most. I got most of my guys coming. You know, um, don't don't like the only question mark we got now is is, is uh, Eli. Is Eli gonna be able to make it? Ooh. It was too it was too far out in advance for him to be able to commit because you know got a lot of stuff going on. So, well, what's he got going on in May? I mean, he's not doing I mean, games he, in May. He, well, Eli, he's playing I mean, golf in May. What's he doing? Well, when you're Eli Manning, you never know yeah. what's gonna come up. That might be a little bit more worth it to do than a damn golfball game. <laughs> okay. You know. Okay. Who do you think is the best, the best softball you. player of the bunch? Like, I feel like Eli wouldn't be good No, at Eli was a great baseball player. Was he? Great, oh, okay. Better than Peyton. Um, great, great baseball read player. Read that wrong. I feel like tall, lanky, maybe. World-class athlete, man. Who else on your team could play? Could you play? Yeah, I can play. You don't look like a baseball player. Who's that? Man. You. I don't. Right. I don't look like I can breaststroke either, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No, but you do look like you can kick the snot out of both of us here. Court. Looks like Albert Bell or yeah. something. Frank Thomas, actually. Now that I think about it, so who else is on the team? Is Tiki playing or no? Um. I, we would love Tiki to be there. I don't think he can be there due to whatever okay. he has. Gotcha, on, gotcha. But, uh, we, we would love him to be able to be there. Man. And what we got, are we raising money for? What is this all about? Obviously, it's for a good cause. We are raising money for uh, St. Sink? Christopher's. Yeah. Oh, I love uh, it. Love it. They do a lot of work with, uh, you know, kids. Yep, patron uh, saint, patron saint of yeah. kids. So, man, Absolutely. You know, every, you know, like every time we, we do this, we, we you know, we want to tag a good uh, a charity to it. You know, we haven't done it in five years. Wow, okay. okay. We stopped. Our last time doing it was, I think, right before COVID. And we took a break off of it. And then, of course, it was with Landon Collins then before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's with Dexter Lawrence. So, man, it's, 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 it's always good to get out with a, a lot of my guys I play with. And to get out around the new guys and the current guys and like see what they got going on, see what their mindset is for the you know season, you know that way I, I would be able to have a better idea of what the New York Giants is going to do throughout the season after the softball game. Tickets oh, okay. tickets can be purchased on the MLB ticket site. Uh, it is for Saint uh, Saint Christopher's Inc., which is an organization empowering children and youth with special needs. Of course, looks like a fun event. Dexter, sexy Dex. And big, big, you, big Brandon Jacobs. Yeah, I mean, boy, it, that's, that's a battle you two going at going right at there. It. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You think he's one of the guys who may be able to tackle you? I mean, even that's back true. in your, you know, yeah. He's a beast. He's I know a you beast. were a beast. You know, but you know the easiest person on the field to run over? A defensive lineman. Because he's, got, he's, got, he's no got no momentum coming. going he forward. He's got no momentum going forward, but one, and he's got to be getting off of a block. So his feet is his yeah. feet's not playing. He's a little ground. preoccupied with somebody right. else. I mean, I still remember uh, – you know, you know, playing against the Cowboys and, and playing against uh, was it Ferguson at the time? Yeah, yeah, Ferguson he, was, he there. was getting off of a block that Sean Harris somebody had come and he stuck his whole body in the hole and just really ran. Through. He stuck his arm he, out, just ran. Through. I think he tore his pec and everything. Then give me your most satisfying like 
smashing somebody down the field, either stiff arm or just bowling them over like you did My so many. Things. You have one guy in particular that you just destroyed. Um, I'm gonna say Brian Erlicher. I'm, I'm gonna say that because he's a bigger body. Mm. Uh, running over Laurent Landry, that was his DB that tried to hit high. I mean, yeah, that's a come given. on, yeah. That, like, that's, like a, that's like a turnstile. Yeah. You just keep, yeah, keep no, moving. So I'm not Disney turnstile. Yeah. But I was I was running uh, against the uh, Chicago Bears and I was going toward the sideline and I saw Earl like a pursuing toward the sideline. He had no idea. Oh, he had no idea. He, I put my foot in the ground. He got north south and. Wow! Knocked him. You know, he flew off. And I don't remember that one. So you got him a little bit on the side. I or? got him. I got him. As so, I'm running here. Yep. And he's pursuing. He's coming there. And as he's going, I put my foot in the ground. And boom! Just oh, like that. It was, it was yeah. sweet. So it's yeah. you know, And I already saw the corner outside. He 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 had a leverage outside. So I'm like, I'm gonna have to try to squeeze inside sure. the wide receiver. So that means I'll be running away from him. It would be easier for him to tackle. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna run, put my foot in the ground, and find a little crease and run right into him. I, you I, might, have, I might have got like eight extra yards just because I did that. That is God, the, the uh, that's good stuff. Yeah, I wish man. I could do stuff like that. The old time Giants touchdowns leader. Um, I wish you could do stuff like that. I wish. I wish. <laughs> trust me. I wish. Let me ask you this: the the Giants building in general. Mm-hmm. And the Giants organization in general has has taken a knock, and, and rightfully so. Now, a couple of years ago, it was a lot of fun. They won more games than we thought. They went to Minnesota. They waxed them. They won a real playoff game. Got to respect that. Mm-hmm. We all do, um, even if it wasn't sustainable, because then they got waxed the next game, and it kind of reality set in. But between ownership maybe being, I don't want to say a little spotty the last couple of years, but it doesn't feel like it used to. Is it getting back to there? Because... The Giants were always defined by class and stability and always doing the right thing. And now it's like the building with Wink and Dable a year ago was a mess. Like, where is the, in a long-winded way, where is the building right now? Well, I, I got to tell you, as I haven't really been in the building. But you know, lately, you know, you know. I, I think, you know, coming in and I think you have to sense energy as a as an owner, general manager of a team. I think you have to sense energy in between coaches. You have to watch them on the sideline. I think it's some, some it's like you have to watch them interact, right? If, if you see the stubbornness of one coach, you know, you can't have a stubborn coach. And I think that's probably what, what it is most of the time. Your head coach can't be stubborn. Your coordinators can't be stubborn. Your position coaches can't be stubborn. It's mm. a team job. Do you think Dable's stubborn? He comes I, across I, I, as a little stubborn. Well, I know Wake was stubborn. Well, is Dable? I'm, I'm not going to say because I was when I had a chance to sit down and, and talk to Dable, he was awesome. He was absolutely phenomenal to talk to. Great guy. Um, but stubbornness is, is, is something that rips that rips apart coaching staff because everyone that's their living, that's what their profession. They think they're perfect at it, right? Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear somebody else say something that they're not doing right. You yeah, know, especially makes sense. when your job is something else, uh-huh. you don't worry about my group, right? Yeah. So unless you know coaches, you know, just it's just like players. You have to be able to take accountability from your peer. If you cannot take accountability from your peer, then everything is going to be is going down here. You know what I mean? I, I think that's something. More so than, than 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 anything else, you have to put coaches in place that have a great relationship, right? I've never seen Coach Coffin get into it with any of his position coaches. Really, I've never seen it. Well, you see Sean Payton do it, and Sean Payton's really good. You see, you've well, seen others do. Or like, seen it's others not do that it. it. It's not that it can't work, B. Like right, it could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, but just far as what I know, you know, teams I played on, I've never seen Coach Coffin. Wow. jump in one of his coordinators' face. I've never seen. A coordinator jump into the position coach face. I've never yeah. really seen any of that. And I, I didn't even see with Wink and uh, I never seen that happen right. as well. But we all know through the media they they disagreed a lot, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So we can take that for whatever we want to take it for and make it whatever we want to make it, right? But I, I do think you need to have coaches in there to have a great, great, great rapport with one another, and the players have a great rapport with one another and be able to take accountability from your peer. Brandon Tierney, Sal Akata in studio here with Brandon Jacobs. They got the Dexter Lawrence, Brandon Jacobs celebrity softball game coming up Saturday, May 18th, Clover Stadium uh, in Pomona, New York. Tickets can be purchased on the MLB ticket site. The charity, of course, St. Christopher's Inc., which is an organization empowering children and youth with special needs. Brandon, do you still watch? Like, how are you consuming football? You sit there on a big screen and watch all the games. You're watching just the Giants. What's a football Sunday like for you now in retirement? Well, now in retirement for me, a football Sunday is sitting down with a big screen in front of me with all of the games on there because I am on the radio. I'm on the radio during on Sundays. On For where? NFL. ESPN primetime. Oh, I didn't know that. I've heard you a couple times. Yeah, I, I, I was I, not you know, aware of that. Doing look at you. Yeah, man. So I'm trying. I'm trying to graduate. I'm trying to. I'm trying to graduate the TV. 
Mm-hmm. You know, put this pretty mug, man, right on the right on the screen. And That's what do you want to do? Be an analyst for it doesn't matter. Jets, Giants, or National? You want to do matter. Na- National okay. doesn't matter. I cover any, any team. Maybe you and your buddy Rex could do a show together. I, I know you guys Rex. get along, Greg. I, I, I love Rex. <laughs> yeah. Rex, Rex now, now Rex is great. I, yeah, no, I told no. you, I had opportunity to talk to Rex after that season was over. We, yeah. I was with San Francisco, and we came to play the Jets. Yep. And uh, he said, "Hey, you, you call me fat." Yeah, oh, I remember. Look at what you did. Yeah, yeah. he lost that he weight. Motivated. Yeah, he but he put it back weight. a little bit. He, he lost that weight, but man. he put it back. So, I'm not calling him fat, but I think he put it back. So maybe he got no, called fat again. Man, it's hard, man. Food is good. It's too easy to get when you got money. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, It's funny you say that because I would have thought for sure that you would have been a guy who would have just like let yourself go and gotten fat. Who, me? Yeah, this guy's guy's a boxer. I know, this you're, dude, you're a no I just thought, yeah, you were always a bigger guy. Okay. And like a lot of times you see guys like that, you know, you get done with football, you stop working out, you start eating, like you said, good food, you get fat. You are in peak physical condition. Well, because, man, I have kids, one, and I've, I when, so when I retired, I got into coaching kids. So he kept me busy, hot, moving around. If, you, if you're going to be a coach and you can't, show an example of what's supposed to be done, you shouldn't be coaching. Hmm. Especially a young man that's coaching yep. kids. kids. was 32, yeah. 33 years old when I, started respect co- you. when I started coaching. Kids were seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I can't teach them what to do, show them what to do, mm-hmm. I shouldn't be doing it. You know, and and, and you know, I, I got a big son, man, uh, you know, just committed to Clemson. That's so phenomenal. we got to break man. a little bit. Tell everybody how big yeah. he is, by he's, the way. He's six. He, he, he's almost six, eight. You know, just waiting at like 333 three, 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 or 334, something, you know, something eight, like that, man. Can he play for the Knicks yeah. Sunday? Yeah, man. So <laughs> Against Philly? Tackle. Can he take out Embiid? Yeah, right. Oh, I don't know. Uh, but some, out, I don't think nobody can ass. take Embiid out, man. What? Embiid at 50. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. saying take him out physically, take him out. Oh, but what he did to him last night, take him out, take him out. Not just shut him down. I mean, take him out, B. He's a beast, man. Hey, by the way, I meant to ask you this. He's play for the Giants. I mean, that's what we're talking about. He is. Hope so, man, one day. Yeah, we've heard about him. I remember you telling me about him a couple of years ago. I don't know if you remember this real fast. He loves Harbaugh. I love Harbaugh. Mm-hmm. Do you remember, I was in San Francisco for a minute, when you were at the Niners for a minute, mm-hmm. and I actually went on the field and I saw you mm-hmm. pregame. Remember that? Like when you, and you yeah, didn't I play do. much. And you, you were pissed at Harbaugh. I just went to say, what's up? Because we did radio together back in the day. Whatever. Same agent back in the day. And I think Harbaugh's amazing, but it didn't work out for Brandon Edwards. didn't work out for you. Like, what is Harbaugh's deal? Because people either love him or don't, and he's polarizing. I think he's a great coach. What was your experience with him? Well, my experience with, with Jim, man, I, I just I got hurt in the preseason, and that kind of taint, tainted my whole time over there, you know, going over there, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And I ended up getting hurt in the preseason. I kind of never was the same. But I thought that was going to put me on IR, you know. I had a great two, two and a half tear on my MCL, so I didn't know I was going to really come, be able to come back from that. Yep. Um, so they, you know, they nursed me back, and I come back, and uh, you know, I'm thinking, okay, these guys don't want to put me on, on IR. They okay, they they got a plan. Mm-hmm. And Jim, my issue is with Jim. He lied to me. What did he tell you, and then what did he do? Well, because you know, it was like, okay, we're gonna make you inactive this game. We'll make you inactive this game. We we want to save you down to the playoffs. You've been there. You played this game long enough. We want to save you for the playoffs. Save you for the playoffs. This, that, and the third. And I, and the whole time, I just for whatever reason, why well, I know I went to practice. I did everything I had to. I, I had to do. Um, so my time there, you know. Frank hadn't been making it through the season. Frank Gore. You know, Frank, Frank, Frank got to a point that that season where man, I he he just worked out hard. We worked out hard and hard uh in the, like in the offseason. And Vernon Davis tight yeah, end. We, yeah, he was in a way he was we a weight room guy. Team. I just wasn't one of Jim's guys. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I do. It, it's just just what it was. Like like they offered my son at, at at Michigan when he was there. Oh. And I and I said to myself, I'm like, man, that's something he would do. That's something he would do just to be like. Really? Yeah. So. Um, I mean, like arrogance kind of deal or? I, I mean, only with certain people, I guess. But, but you got to be his guy, though. And everybody that's played for Jim, they probably tell you that if you're not his guy, you, yep. you, you scum of the earth. Is that different for anywhere else? Like, don't you almost have to be? Like, if you're not Coughlin's guy, you're not Coughlin's guy. Well, if you're not, not Dable's guy. Okay, go ahead. That's not true tell with, me. with Tom because Tom is the same way with everybody on the team. He's gonna get in. He, he's gonna he's gonna rip your new one. He's not about to pick favorites. He's not about to do anything. Now we know like Ahmad was his favorite because he stayed on his back about a whole lot of stuff. So mm-hmm. and he stayed on my back about him. You need to stay on his back as well about Ahmad Bradshaw. Yeah, he had uh-huh. a whole conversation in the office with him about 
Come on. Wow. 30 minutes about what I need to do with him. I, I know we got to wow. go here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would annoy me if I'm you, by the so, way. I'm yeah. like, let me worry about myself. No you, disrespect. You came back for the Giants one more year. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you get your 27 back? Andre Brown, like, what? You, come on. You won two Super Bowls. Show the guy some respect. Give him his number 27. Stevie Brown had 27 then, and he was on IR and wouldn't give me the number back. Did you try Did you, to he's, he's, first all, trade? First of all, you shouldn't, have had a, you shouldn't have had to ask. I agree number with one. That's true. You won two Super Bowls. Everybody knows Brandon Jacobs number 27. I, I get it. I definitely understand. I don't know why he didn't want to give it to me. All right. He was on IR. He wasn't, he wasn't even playing. Well, mm. I, 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 I don't know for the life of me why I couldn't get it back. I asked because the guy was on IR. Now, if he wasn't on IR and wanted his number, cool. But I guess he felt like he did something in 27 prior, the year prior. So yeah. he felt like he... Mm. he so I didn't I know if I'd say no to this guy. I don't know. Yeah, that's say my number. That is bullshit. <laughs> say my number. I didn't make a big deal out of it. Yeah. I hear you. No, You're not I that am. kind of I mean, guy. That's ridiculous. Andre Brown. Who the hell is that? Andre Brown. Yeah. No, anyway. Andre Brown was a guy we had playing running back. Right. This is Stevie Brown that had it. No, wait uh, a second. I'm looking at, oh, maybe this is wrong here. I'm looking at it. says Andre Brown had number 27. Mm-mm. Stevie uh, Brown was number 27. Uh, Steve I at, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I looked that up wrong. You, you're right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, you would know, obviously, mm-hmm. better than I would. Well, trust me. I knew. I went back over yeah. there. I talked to him about it. He was on IR because I went back over there week two. So he was already on the IR. Yep. So I was like, I'm trying to get 27. And he just didn't want to give it back to me. So. Listen, here's the here's the bad thing about doing radio. We got to go to breaks. Yeah. Uh, we have to. Otherwise, we could just sit here and shoot the breeze with this guy all day. Uh, good seeing you, bro. You look fantastic. Good, good having me, man. Congrats yeah. on your son. Thank you. I and all the other it, stuff. Man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. It yeah. was always a blast coming here, man. He's a good dude, man. Brandon Jacobs, two-time Super Bowl champ. We've got Team Lawrence, Team Jacobs, Saturday, May 18th, a little dodgeball home run derby softball game for St. Christopher's to benefit the kids. 